and they really prefer 85 degree water. And if it gets below 70, they'll stop eating completely, and then they'll start uh, having health issues. Okay, ma'am. Is it likely to get too hot in a greenhouse in this part of the country for tilapia? Okay, good question. The question is, uh, it, will it get too hot in a greenhouse for the fish or the plants? Um, yes, it can. Uh, you would need to run shade cloth depending on what you're growing. Tilapia can handle up to 110 degree water, I think, so they're they're not too unhappy with high temperatures. Uh, your catfish species and other things like that will will definitely not prefer that kind of temperatures. Okay, sir. What do we about as far as greenhouse is concerned, the secret is not used to measure greenhouses on a small scale, but massive greenhouses. Okay, he made a bunch, he made a statement about greenhouses. I'm not a greenhouse expert, so if you can come up to the microphone and and tell the group, I would that would be nice. What I'm saying is that your conventional greenhouses are very energy wasteful, and we're looking to, to, to conserve energy and resources in any way we can. There are greenhouses that can be designed that really don't require any external energy to heat and cool, work 100% passively, and generally get, don't go below, you know, 10 degrees cooler in the, in the summertime during the heat of the day, and rarely go below 60, 50, 50 55 degrees in the time. Okay, is there a resource that you would recommend people go to to find out more about that? Well, I, I'm doing this talk tomorrow. I don't mean to advertise that at all. Oh, but, okay. but basically, it's, it's, it, it, it took four, four to six o'clock tomorrow. Which I mean, tent? excuse me, four to six o'clock this afternoon. Which tent? Uh, the green tent. There you go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't mind you doing that at all. If the water does happen to get too warm, is there a way you can run it through those like cell systems that a lot of industrial greenhouses use to cool them? Right here, go ahead. Uh, my question was, um, if the water does happen to get too warm, could you use water through your system when it's relatively clean to go through your uh, uh, basically your swamp coolers? And if the water is too cool, looking at uh, solar water heating systems to bring it up to the correct temperature. I'd say you should definitely try those. <laughs> I don't know the answer, but it sounds like a good thing to try. Go ahead, sir. Can you explain your typical harvesting technique, and are you physically growing and harvesting right now? I am not growing and harvesting right now. I'm helping others to build systems. So typical harvesting is just cutting the plant or removing it with the roots intact and a lot of them. Oh, the fish. We grow out the fish for, well, depending on the species, the tilapia can be raised from a 50 gram pangolin to a full grown fish in about six to eight months. You grow them in separate tanks so that you're not removing large amounts of nutrients from your system at one time. You have separate batches of fish because if you remove all your fish from your system, then your plants won't be happy. So you have to remove these them in, in staged batches. And if you go back to the UBI slide, but that's how they do it. Every six weeks, they pull out another batch of fish. So they're only removing, say, 25% of the nutrient flow into the system at any one time, and then can basically bounce back up as the rest of the fish will grow larger. You basically just drain the tank out and scoop them out with a net and harvest them from there. Does that answer your question? Yes. I mean, you, you can fillet them. You can freeze them. You have, you know, some people serve them whole because you can get more meat from the fish that way. But typically, they're filleted. Yes. Ma'am. In a Okay, the question is, can you put uh, floating rafts in a backyard pond? Uh, the answer would be yes, if you have enough fish in that pond. And generally, people do have enough fish in their ponds. You'll see their ponds, and they're doing water changes, regular water changes, 
that's because they're trying to reduce the nitrates in their pond. And if you put enough plants in your pond, they will remove the nitrates. So I would definitely recommend rafts in a, in a pond system. If you have uh, herb, herbivore fish in your ponds, they will try to eat the roots of the plants in, in your rafts, and so you'll need to protect the roots somehow from the fish, or build a separate system where you have a raftway and then flow your, flow your nutrients from the pond up into your raftway so that the roots can grow fully and not get eat, eaten off by the plants. I've got a neighbor who's building a system like that. He's had uh, koi and goldfish for a long, long time, and he found out about aquaponics, and now he's building a raft system that he's gonna hook into his pond so he can run the nutrients out to there and then grow, grow lettuce and basil and things like that. Go ahead. Uh, two questions. Are there any medium to large scale uh, aquaponics in Texas? And what is the, the staffing like in places like that for medium to large operations? There's one semi-large operation that's going in up by, it's just south of, of Fort Worth. I believe their website is aquaponicsandmore.com. Uh, shoot, again, shoot me an email and I'll get you contacts on this stuff. It's not finished yet, so there's really, the answer is no, there are no large systems in Texas as far as I'm aware right now. Uh, the staffing at the larger operations that I've seen is fairly low. They, they require people to package the herbs that they're growing, and that's the main demand. So there's uh, the one up in Philadelphia that I showed you, which is a very pretty large greenhouse operation. They have uh, four four employees, I think. Go ahead, sir. Most plants I know, when the roots are perpetually in the water, will die. So are there certain species of plants that you need that will withstand that? I'm sorry, repeat. Well, uh, your roots are perpetually in the water. Right. Most plants will die under that condition. Yes. The uh, Okay, the question is, uh, why don't the roots drown or suffocate in the aquatic uh, environment that they're put in as far as the, the systems go. Um, the, the reason is because we have uh, a lot of oxygen that we're adding to the, the, root, the root level. Let's see if I can find this. There we go. In this system, this is a raft system, they always aerate the roots very well. There's a lot of aeration going on in the tanks and that keeps the roots happy and it depends on the species of plant lettuce and basil and things like that, which a lot of people grow in these systems, they're quite happy in, in, a, uh, in a, uh, a, a waterlogged environment like this as long as you have aeration going on underneath. If you cut off the aeration, within a couple of days those plants will definitely start to suffer. So that, Do you have bubbling tissue? Do you have bubbling? Yes, there are aerators underneath of these rafts that, uh, that keeps those roots happy let's see and in this system here along the whole length of those raftways underneath is a, is a whole bunch of aerators and they're they're constantly bubbling to keep the roots aerated because roots do require oxygen and the flood and drain systems like this one when it when the water drains out of the gravel bed it pulls the air down to the roots and it gives the roots a good shot of oxygen which really helps the plants grow very very well so it, it helps the uh, it helps the plants to get more oxygen to them than they would normally get in the growing in the ground. That's why it's sort of simulating a, a ground with a good drainage system. And you might ground with good drainage. Well, this has excellent drainage. It drains right out. But of course, that would be bad in a ground situation because you'd have to be constantly watering it. Well, we do that, but we don't waste the water. Uh, Ma'am. Uh, did you have an idea about the I, okay, the question is, right. So, so in the education of hydroponics in tilapia, is that something that should be part of the discussion? Yes. The question is that I heard about lionfish escaping in Florida from a hurricane, I guess. Yeah. And um, so it brings up the whole issue of invasive species and how they can wreak havoc.